Hello everyone, today I'm unveiling a new project I've been working on, a custom pre-runner style vehicle using this FIU FY01 Fighter 1 1 12th scale four-wheel drive short course truck as a base. I came across this truck a while back, I think on GearBest.com, but I don't know for sure where it was. But I saw this for sale for like 60 to 65 US dollars with free shipping and decided to make the purchase and use it for a custom build. Besides the price, there were a few other reasons I decided to purchase this vehicle, the biggest being the design. As you'll see more of later on in this video, this truck features a long arm independent front suspension and a solid axle in the rear. A very similar suspension design to most full scale trophy trucks and pre-runners. Many other low cost short course trucks feature independent front and rear suspension and often have the motor mounted in the rear which is far less like a full scale truck. I'm also curious to see how this low budget truck holds up and how well it drives. As you can see this truck is ready to run and does include a battery and charger. Before filming this video I had already opened the box and taken the vehicle out so that is why there isn't any styrofoam packaging inside. The truck also includes a nice manual with plenty of exploded diagrams and a list of parts and part numbers. You can buy replacement and upgrade parts for this vehicle. The body is pretty typical for a ready to run vehicle like this and I think it looks pretty nice. Plus it's kind of amusing to notice just how many times super fast is written on it. The controller is what you would expect for a low cost ready to run vehicle. It's very light and feels cheap but it'll get the job done. You can choose between 50-50 and 70-30 ratio on the throttle trigger and left or right hand steering. As you've probably already noticed this truck uses a 2.4 gigahertz radio system. Taking a look under the lid, you can see how the suspension layout is similar to that of a full-scale trophy truck. The only major difference is the Fighter 1 uses a pushrod suspension in the front, which places the shocks where the engine would be in a front-engined full-scale vehicle. The electronics are basic, and due to the ESC and receiver being one unit, and the non-conventional steering servo plug, upgrading just one of these components would require all three to be upgraded at the same time. I don't want to go into too much detail about the specs in this video, so if you want more details about this vehicle, I've put a link below in the description which has more information. Plus if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it. The shocks aren't great, but they're good enough for this project. The truck overall is light and mostly made of plastic. The overall fit and finish isn't bad, but it's definitely not the best. However, everything seems solid. Before I began the build, I wanted to do some driving. There had been a lot of rain when I was filming this, and since this vehicle isn't waterproof, I wanted to keep it out of the wet grass. I have driven this vehicle through grass and dirt prior to filming this, and it's definitely better suited for that type of terrain. All in all, the truck drives pretty nice, and I think most casual and younger RC enthusiasts would enjoy it. The truck handles decently on off-road terrain, and the motor does have plenty of power. The suspension on the other hand isn't great. The shocks are quite stiff causing rough landings off of jumps and poor handling especially when driving on hard surfaces. The steering servo also leaves a lot to be desired. The steering isn't always accurate and the servo seems to have a hard time centering. On pretty much any hobby grade RC vehicle this wouldn't be a big deal since upgrading the steering servo is generally a simple and common upgrade. But as I mentioned earlier the servo on this vehicle uses a non-conventional four wire plug. So unless there's some sort of adapter and the stock ESC and receiver can handle the additional current draw of an upgraded servo, you will have to replace the servo, ESC and receiver all at the same time. All in all, I think the Fighter 1 is a decent choice for the casual enthusiast or first vehicle for a child, and if it can be acquired for cheap, a good base for a custom build. It's fun to drive and replacement parts as well as some upgrade parts are available. However, if you're more serious about the hobby, want a higher performance vehicle with better handling, support, and better part selection, or you want a vehicle you can race at your local track, this is not the right choice. 
You'll want a more quality 110 scale truck or buggy like the ones manufactured by Losi, Team Associated, HPI, or Kyosho. If you can't afford one of these new, consider getting a used vehicle. So now let's talk about what I'll be building. I want to build a pre-runner style desert racing truck. If you don't know what a pre-runner is, the name originates from vehicles that are used by a race team to drive the course before a race. Since many desert races involve driving to designated checkpoints rather than a closed racing circuit, the team has to figure out what path is the fastest. Using the racing vehicle that they will compete with to do this is not practical, so teams will use a pre-runner to pre-run the course instead. Although a pre-runner could be any vehicle that has the required off-road capabilities, pre-runners are commonly modified pickup trucks fitted with upgraded suspension, more capable wheels and tires, tuned engines, spare tires, larger fuel tanks, auxiliary lighting, and navigation equipment. Many off-road enthusiasts have done these same modifications to their vehicles, turning their stock pickups into incredibly capable desert vehicles. So the exact definition of what makes a truck a pre-runner, or what modifications are required to call a truck a pre-runner, vary from person to person. Personally, I think of a pre-runner truck as having extensive suspension upgrades similar to a trophy truck, but still retaining at least some level of comfort and usually is built from a production vehicle as opposed to a fully tube chassis with a fully fiberglass body. But with all that said, and from these images, you can get an idea of what I'm trying to build. One big inspiration for this project is this custom 1969 Ford F100 pickup called the F2000. I really like the custom bodywork on this truck. This is the body I'll be using for this build. It's a 1972 Chevrolet pickup made by Proline, which I acquired as a part of a trade. I really like this body style, and I think it will make a cool and unique looking pre-runner. Although I do like this paint design and color, I will be painting over top of it. Right now I'm thinking of going with a matte white with maybe some black accents, but I haven't decided on anything yet. I started by removing all four wheels. I will not be using them for this project, mostly because they're a little bigger than what I want, plus I'm not that interested in the design. Putting on some slightly smaller wheels will help give this truck a little more of a scale look. I'm not going for a super scale realistic look, to do that would require a lot of effort, and I just want to have some fun with this build. Plus I want to leave this Fighter 1 chassis as stock as possible at least until I finish the body. Maybe after that I'll do some upgrades to the suspension and the electronics, but for now I'm just gonna focus on the body and making this thing look good. Although I do like the look of this front bumper, it's too large for this body, so I'm removing it and installing a custom one instead. I cut the body in half, separating the bed from the front portion. 
I will not be using the bed for this build. Instead, I will design and print custom bedside pieces, as well as large front fenders. I will need to build the backside of the cab. My plan right now is to design and print the backside of the cab, then attach it to the body, and then fill and sand the transition between the two pieces. I've never attempted matching a 3D printed plastic body piece to a polycarbonate body like this, so we'll see how well I'm able to pull off the transition between the two pieces. The biggest problem I see with doing this is the flexibility of the polycarbonate causing any filler used to smooth the transition between the two pieces to crack. I think the best way to prevent this is to build a solid cage and mount the body securely to it which should prevent it from flexing. Ideally, I would prefer the track width of this vehicle to be a little narrower, but it'll still look cool as is. With the front shocks positioned how they are, I probably won't be able to fit in an engine, but it looks like I will be able to fit an interior. As I said earlier, I will be using smaller tires than what are included stock. I 3D printed this Interco TSL Thornbird off-road tire, which has an outside diameter of about 75mm, so I can get an idea of what size tire I want to use. I think around 75 to 80mm outer diameter is a good size for this vehicle. I'm not aware of anyone who makes RC off-road tires in this size, so I'll probably have to make my own, but if anyone watching knows where I can get tires in this size, please let me know. Obviously, this project is in a very early stage. Right now I'm doing a lot of brainstorming and kind of planning how I'm going to go about this build. So I'm just going to keep on building it up and seeing how it progresses and just having some fun with it. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any updates on this project or any other builds. And be sure to follow me at the social media links below in the description for more frequent project updates. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and share this video and leave a comment below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.